Hello everyone and welcome to TST with Jake for this November 18th, Thursday, November 18th, 2021, where we will be discussing the week 11 of the NFL season, as well as touching on some NBA stuff. And it's been a while since I did the test episode a couple weeks ago. I uh, went over some stuff with that, uh, kind of listened through everything, trying to, trying to come up with segments, everything like that. And there has been a lot that has happened in the sports world the last couple weeks. Uh, this isn't even getting to begin to talk about the Chicago Blackhawks and all of that stuff that's going on there. Needless to say, I'm not a Blackhawks fan anymore. <laughs> um, but we're going to start off today with looking at week 11 of the NFL season, which begins tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday Night Football with the red-hot New England Patriots visiting the Atlanta Falcons. And I think this game should be probably in favor of the New England Patriots. I'm they if you've looked at this team the last couple weeks, they have been red hot. They have been the I would say they they're one of the hottest teams in the league. Mac Jones, a lot of that comes down to him. He's been absolutely terrific in this stretch. Since they started 1 and 3, Mac has looked better and better each week in and out. And yeah, he's had moments where he's looked like a rookie that game against the Chargers especially, struggled a lot on offense, but this team really feels like it's gelling. Mac has been the best rookie quarterback of the draft so far. I don't really think it's even that close of a competition. You look at Mac's stats so far, 13 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. That's pretty good for a rookie season. And a lot of those interceptions were tips at the start of the season. He actually had his best game as a rookie last week against the Browns where they demolished the Browns. He had three touchdowns, no turnovers, and just commanded that offense. And they, they looked good. And as I'm trying not to stay as uh, biased as I am as a Patriots fan because, yeah, I am a Patriots fan. But... Looking at what this team has been doing recently, the adjustments, they are opening up the playbook. McDaniels has started to finally trust Mac Jones, and this is something I talked about on my trial episode, is that this team needed to trust Mac Jones. They needed to put the ball in his hands and make sure that we were winning because of him. And they're doing that. After the after the loss to the Cowboys, I think uh, they finally realized that, you know what? Just let this kid roll. And that's what this team is doing. They're rolling through every single team. And I think that they realistically have a shot now at the AFC East, which is something not a lot of people were thinking coming into this season because everyone's like, oh, it's the Bills. It's the Bills time. Look at them last year. They went to the AFC Championship game. They're just going to do it again. It's a rookie quarterback. And this team has shocked a lot of people, myself included. I think they're overachieving right now. I, I think they can keep it up. And that's that's the scary thing is that no one wants to admit that the Patriots are back. And I don't, I don't want to sit here and say that they're they're fully back yet because there's still a lot of things on this team that uh, like wide, receive, wide receivers, they're not obviously. There's not that electric number one, although Jacoby Myers has finally, finally got his touchdown last week, which was a tremendous moment for for Patriots fans and just seeing the team celebrate with him was amazing uh, but there, there's a lot of good pieces on this team Mac Jones has been a stud the running game whether it's Ramon J. Stevenson who looked terrific against the Browns in recovery uh, in relief of Damian Harris who has also looked very good throughout the season or it's the tight ends Hunter Henry has been a red zone machine he has seven touchdowns in seven games uh, well, in the seven-game stretch, honestly, and he's been tremendous in that red zone. Johnny Smith has been a little bit of a disappointment. He has not really been doing much, and he's kind of been the one, um, I don't want to say flag because I think that's a little disrespectful. He's been kind of the, the meh signing of this team, but other than that, you look at that defense that is starting to finally come around. J.C. Jackson is emerging as that number one cornerback, which is tremendous to see. Mr. INT, he's getting the job done right now, and all of it runs through one man right now, and that is Matt Judon, the dude with the red sleeves. This guy is a stud, and he is having a Pro Bowl season. He is having a Defensive Player of the Year season. He's up there right now in sacks, and he's going to have a career year in sacks, and it just seems every play, he is doing something. He is always there. He is getting held every single play. He is commanding that defense, and I think because of that, all these all these facets, Bill Belichick is working with a rookie quarterback, and if this team makes it to the postseason, if this team ends up winning the AFC East, I think we got to start to have that discussion about are the Patriots uh, are are they going to make some noise in the playoffs? Is Bill Belichick going to be coach of the year? Because bringing a rookie quarterback after a seven to nine season from last year with a, uh, a disappointing season for the Patriots coming back, making the playoffs a year later, revamping this entire team, this offense, this defense, all of it in one off season and making playoffs and possibly winning the division. I I don't think I don't think that can be understated. And if that team somehow makes it to the playoffs, which I think they have a good shot now. They just got to keep winning. 
And you look at their gauntlet. They're kind of entering a gauntlet right now for the next couple weeks. Tonight they have the Falcons, obviously, but then it's the Colts, the Bills, the Titans. So that that's that's going to be a little bit of a challenge going through. Hopefully they can win out some of those games. And those games against the Bills are going to come down to uh, those are going to be some very important games, which I wasn't expecting at the beginning of the season. But like I said, I I would be I would be a little cautious of the Patriots. I think uh, I think they're coming, and I think people are starting to realize this now. I think that it, it don't don't trust. Don't don't count out Bill Belichick. Um, and we are currently halfway through the NFL season as it stands. Week ten just passed last week, and what we know is probably nothing right now. And I can sit here and say I've said in years prior that the NFL has been it's always a crapshoot about who wins some games, but usually the better teams do win. There's a couple upsets. It doesn't feel like that's the case this year. It just feels like upsets are coming everywhere. Um, it feels like, you know, every team has a chance to win. And I know there's the saying any given Sunday, but it feels like more than ever that a team that you feel like is going to have that momentum is going to build and look like the odds on best team in the NFL have been losing. And not just not just badly, not just like a little, like, okay, like a three-point loss, a two-point a, a walk-off. No, they're embarrassing losses. This happened again this week, twice, actually, with the Buccaneers losing to the Washington football team. Taylor Heineke somehow owns this team. He he shows up every time he plays the Buccaneers. Obviously, that wild, massive wild card game last year where he almost pulled the upset on them. But he did it this week. They, they beat the Buccaneers, and they looked stale and... Brady looked a little stagnant. He threw two interceptions right off the bat. Obviously, one was off the hands of his, one of his receivers. But this is again a team that a lot of people think is the odds-on favorite to make it to the Super Bowl this year out of the out of the NFC. And they had a loss to the Washington football team. The Ravens, a team that has been dynamic, has been explosive. Lamar Jackson's been getting MVP talk, rightfully so. He's carrying a very, I don't want to say mediocre team. But he is making up for a lot of holes in that team. And again, they just get blown out to the Miami Dolphins, a team that has also been... Well, they have had one hell of a season. There's all the rumors about them trading for Deshaun Watson, Tua Tungavailoa going through all that. And I feel terrible for how this organization has dealt with Tua. And I, I've been very critical of Tua um, in the past and last season and this season. And I, I, I'm not sure he's really getting the proper development he needs. And I think a lot of that comes down to the way that the Dolphins have treated him. I think they have they've been kind of awful to him. I, either you, there's no way you can sit and hear all of these rumors about you're going to be trading for an alleged um an alleged guy guy has 20 cases allegedly on him uh and, and that can affect you somehow and it's it's frustrating seeing how they've dealt with Tua but he came into that game against the Ravens and he won he won them that game uh, he, well, it didn't look great the defense really won them the game but they they won the Ravens lost again uh, same thing Cowboys to the Broncos and I know the Cowboys just blew out uh, another team this week but last week they got destroyed to the Broncos they blew out the Falcons this week they got killed by the Broncos it was no way around it Dak had a terrible game and garbage time uh, made his stats look a little bit more bearable. But again, the Bills of the Jaguars, every single week, these teams are getting these upsets, and it just doesn't seem like there's a single team that is leading the pack that is going to, like, you can look in, in January and say, yeah, that team's going to be, that's going to be there because we don't know what's going to happen. I think one team, kind of, we can say, I, I'd say maybe two, two teams we can kind of maybe maybe we're okay with is the Packers and the Titans. I think the Titans especially have been kind of shocking, especially since Derrick Henry went down right after I made my, my, my trial episode, which I'm not taking, I am not mention. I did mention that he gets never hurt, gets hurt. So I, I don't want to hear that. I am the cause of the curse. I don't want to hear that. Uh, he, they've looked good. They brought back Adrian Peterson from the dead. He has looked like an old 36 year old running back, but he got a touchdown and Dante Foreman, they brought him back. He's looked pretty good as their main rusher, Jeremy McNichols in relief. They, this team has just looked really good, really solid. They, and a lot of that comes down to their defense is finally performing on a constant level, a consistent level, and is winning, making winning plays, which they've been needing to do. And I think that they are kind of the odds-on favorite in the AFC somehow without Derrick Henry. And the scary thing is Derrick Henry is coming back later in the season. He should be coming back later in the season. So if this team gets Henry back, they could make a deep run in the postseason, as crazy as that sounds. I guess it's not so crazy because they made the AFC Championship a couple years ago, didn't they? That's weird. Uh, the Packers, again, another team that I think is probably the odds-on favorite now in the NFC. It, Aaron Rodgers, his whole, uh, his whole stuff. Uh, that 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 was fun to listen with, wasn't it? His his 
his talk on the Pat McAfee podcast on Friday, right after he tested positive for COVID, the whole, am I immunized, am I not immunized, and he just went on a rant about cancel culture and all that, that was just, that was delightful to listen to, that was, that was so fun as a football fan to hear one of the best quarterbacks in the league talking out of his ass, um, that was yeah, that was painful to listen to. But he has since come back saying he's misled people because, yeah, you did, Aaron. They, they're they're probably the heads-on favorite out of the NFC now. I would have said the Rams beforehand, but I I don't know. For something that's meant to be seen as uh, this, this Rams team is also confusing to figure out. They had a very good two weeks. They had signed. They got Von Miller out of a trade. They signed Odell Beckham Jr., who was cut and released from the Browns, and ended up signing there. And everyone was going, "All right, this is the team to beat." Now, they lose to the Titans on Sunday Night Football. Okay, whatever. It's one. It's one week. It is what it is. They didn't have Von Miller. They lose Robert Woods to a torn ACL in practice, which is god awful. He's out for the season. And you're like, okay, Odell's gonna come in. He'll fill up that slot easily. And the first one of the first plays of the game against the 49ers is a Stafford heave. Nowhere in sight is Odell and a pick. And since that move, they did not recover, and they ended up losing 31 to 10 against San Fran. Again, another upset. San Fran, I don't think is a team. I think a lot of people have written off San Fran. I don't think that they should be. I think that they're going to be a team that's going to be there in the postseason, I, especially how inconsistent the NFC is and how top-heavy that is. I think that that last wild-card seed is up for grabs. I think the if Shanahan is able to pull some consistency, which he, he they looked good against the Rams. They, they ran the ball. They punched it down their throat, which is, a, again, this is a team that needs to be running the ball, but I'd never understand Shanahan because he doesn't run the ball half the time. You look at the Super Bowl when they were beating the Chiefs up by 10 with like eight minutes left, and he just didn't run the football. I, he did the same thing when he was the offensive coordinator for the Falcons. He didn't run the football. So uh, does Shanahan finally figure out, does he know that you can just run the football now? Hopefully. Uh, because I like this 49ers team. I like Jimmy Garoppolo. I think they're very excited. Debo Samuel is is an underrated receiver, one of the most underrated receivers in the league. He can do everything. I, I like this team. I think that they're a very solid team. It just comes down to Shanahan if whether he wants to do some boneheaded decisions or if he wants to actually win the games and do their strength, which is running the football, pounding the ball. And they did that against the Rams. They looked really good against the Rams. But again, this team, this Rams team is just, you, you don't, I don't know what to expect now because everyone was like, okay, Odell's going to be the savior. Now that Robert Woods is out, Odell immediately has to fill in that wide receiver two slot, but he doesn't know the offense yet. So it's going to take a little bit for Odell to get adjusted. Do Are we going to really see the Odell from the Giants or are we going to see Odell from the Browns? We, we don't know what we're going to get with Odell here. I I, I don't know. I, I, I want to say that he's going to come in and look amazing, but very rarely do wide receivers come in halfway through the season and look so good right off the bat. Antonio Brown is, a, is an anomaly because Antonio Brown is Antonio Brown. He's one of the most talented wide receivers in the league. Odell, he was in that category, but hasn't been for a while. So we don't know. We will see what happens there. I'm curious to follow this Rams team in the future. Can Stafford step up? Can he not throw some interceptions? Um, Can he get this team back on track again? And I think, again, I don't want to write off the Rams yet, just like a lot of people were writing off the Chiefs. And they came back and they blew out the Raiders on Sunday Night Football because, of course, they did. If you were writing the Chiefs off, uh, you're a little stupid because they're the Chiefs and they're still the most explosive team in the league. Uh, But we'll see. Again, I I just think this season has been so interesting because there's no consistency anywhere. The AFC, everyone talks about how inconsistent it is. But you look at how close everything is, and I think it just makes it way more exciting. The AFC West and the AFC North, every single team has five wins. Now, I, I'm not going to sit here and say every team in the AFC <laughs> West and East are, are good. I, I, I certainly don't think so. You, I don't think the Broncos are that good of a team, uh, <laughs> but they're there. I don't really think the Raiders are that good of a team either. But it's just that just comes to show how fascinating this season has been overall. You have the Chiefs were dead last in the AFC West, and now they're in first with 6-4. and four. You got the Chargers at 5-4, and four, Raiders at 5-4, and four, Broncos at 5-5. Five and five. I have... I, I don't know. It, it's all it's just AFC North, same thing. Ravens are 6-3. and three. 
but they had that loss. The Steelers somehow why how five and three and one that tie to the Lions that was embarrassing, and I know they didn't have Ben, but that's still embarrassing. The Bengals five and four, Browns five and five. Browns have looked I, I you can't read that team at all, and it's you got the AFC South too. You've got the Colts surging up a little bit too, which I think everyone expected to happen. I don't think everyone thought that they were going to be a bad team, and then the AFC what East has come down to the Bills and the Patriots again, and I think it just makes it a lot more exciting. Is that we don't really know who's going to win these divisions. I think the Titans are going to come out hold in the AFC South. I would assume the Ravens would hold on to that lead in the AFC North. And same thing for the Chiefs. But at the rate this season has gone, I don't think we can really count anyone out yet. And I think that's extremely exciting. Moving on a little bit to my last thing I wanted to talk about with the NFL. Not the last thing. One of the last signings of the NFL season is the savior of the Panthers. Cam Newton is back. Uh, the Carolina Panthers, he has signed a one-year deal worth up to $10 million, and he will be their presumable starter going on fourth. He signed last Thursday, and a lot of people are excited about Cam Newton coming back. He's very excited about coming back, if you saw the clip of him screaming at the top of his lungs. He looked like, I don't, he looked decent on Sunday night. He didn't really play a lot. Everyone's kind of touting that he looked like his old self. He had a draw play, which Cam always scores in the red zone on a draw play and screamed, I'm back to get something off. Probably the best unsportsmanlike conduct call I've seen in the league in a while. He had two touchdowns, one slant throw, two. He's two for three for eight yards. And we'll see. We'll see if he's this savior of <laughs> the Panthers because the Panthers are a team that started off very well. As we all know, Sam Darnold looked really good to start the season. Everyone was like, okay, is this team legit? Is this... Is Sam Darnold actually a good quarterback? Was it just the Jets? And I think that the Jets organization has kind of just ruined Sam Darnold in general. Uh, they started losing games. Darnold played at a horrific level. Uh, probably like he was putting up like oh, you couldn't get any worse than the numbers that Sam Darnold were putting up. And he's hurt and he's been placed on IR. And I don't think we're going to see him again this season. And they've now gone and pushed the red button and brought Cam Newton back. And as a Patriots fan again. Uh, everyone's kind of touting him as he's going to be the savior of this team. They have a very good defense. They got Stephon Gilmore. Their defense has looked very good between Burns, Chin, um, all of them, Horn. They they look good. The problem is I don't think Cam is there that he can carry this team on offense because I saw what he looked like last year. And I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt as a Patriots fan saying, okay, yeah, it's COVID. He had COVID. He came back. He looked a little rusty. He looked pretty decent to start the season off. But I just don't. I, I don't know. I, I don't think this is the same Cam Newton that everyone's going to be expecting from three, four years ago. I think that we're going to be expecting a lot more inconsistencies from him, especially the way how he looked last year. He had those up and down moments. And I think if Cam can rally in and hone in and be a bit more consistent, I think this team, Panthers team could end up grabbing that last wild card spot. But again, I don't really trust Cam to come in halfway through a season and try to adjust to a whole new place play a new playing style again because this is not the same offensive coordinate coordinator that was on the panthers when he was there they, he's it's an entirely new offense and we all saw how cam looked in an entirely new offense we looked saw how stagnant mcdaniels made that play calling because cam didn't know what to do he didn't know the offense and he got beaten out by rookie quarterback and i don't think that can be understood here he was cut he was not on a team for a reason yeah his vaccination status had a lot to do with it but i don't i don't know I think they're an, I think they're going to be the team to watch on the second half of the season, at least from like an interesting standpoint, because they certainly have the talent on offense to do it. Christian McCaffrey's back; he's healthy. You have two really good receivers in Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore, another stud on that team. I I don't know. We'll see. And again, I, yeah, we'll see. Coming in on my last segment here for the NFL is going to be talking about some power rankings because we're halfway through the season. I want to go through some power rankings. I want to talk about everything. I'm not going to do all teams because I'm going to be here for years if I try to go through every single team again. I'm going to give you my top 10. Um, I'm going to kind of just talk about everything. Hey, hey, number 10 is the Patriots. And like I said, you can't count out this team. Bill Belichick is rallied this team completely. They are red hot. Mac Jones has looked great. The offense is clicking. Jacoby Myers got his touchdown. Kendrick Bourne, a piece I haven't talked about yet, has been a unsung hero of this offense. He's looked the most explosive out of any player that we've had on offense. And I think if we get Johnny Smith rolling back in there, I think if that run game keeps going as well as it does, I, they're a team to watch, and they could be dangerous. And Bill Belichick might be coach of the year if this team goes far. Number nine is the Chiefs. Again, Mahomes has not looked good to start off the season. He looked pretty bad. He had 10 interceptions. He was doing 
things Mahomes doesn't normally do. They throw in some heaves that don't really hit his receivers, and then he comes around on Sunday night and throws for five touchdowns. And yeah, some of those throws, again, were a little off. Um, and one came to it, like a heave to Daryl hit Williams, and Daryl Williams somehow mossed a defender to get that ball. And I, you can't count this team out. They're just too explosive on offense. the The flag on that on that team is definitely their defense. Daniel Sorensen's one of the worst, <laughs> one of the worst safeties I've ever seen in my life. And they can get burnt on a nightly basis. And I think that if Mahomes is playing at the level we all know Mahomes can play at that this team is still dangerous. And they I don't want to see them in the playoffs. I don't think any team wants to see the Chiefs in the playoffs. If you run into them in December or January, you know that you're not going far. And we all know how dangerous the team can be when they're counted out. And I think this is kind of the same situation as that. They are now 6-4. and four. We'll see. We'll see what happens to them. I have them at number 9 here. Number 8 is the Ravens. Again, Lamar Jackson has been carrying this team. And Mark Andrews is a very good piece on that team. And I think that they have a lot going on for them but also there is just comes the consistency level and that's another thing with a lot of these teams even in the top 10 is that consistency if they can hone in on that consistency if the Ravens can hone in on their consistency I think that they're easily one of the better teams in the AFC especially at the level Lamar Jackson is playing at he's playing almost better than he did in his MVP season and I've always I've never been a big Lamar Jackson fan and I, there's no denying, I've been critical of his throwing ability, and there's no denying he's looked a bit better this year. But again, it just all comes down to how this team stays consistent. Another team that, if they stay consistent, is going to make some noise is the Bills at my number seven. Josh Allen has looked good for a, a good stretch of the season, and then he's had some really boneheaded decisions. And that's kind of what Josh Allen made a name for his first couple years in the season. Obviously, he's been a lot more consistent. Stefan Diggs has helped him out a lot there. They just looked a little off throughout a little bit of the season, especially that 9-6 loss to the Jags. I, I don't understand how they didn't get a single touchdown against the Jaguars. And they're, they're just a very good team. They have a very good defense. I think that they easily can be a dangerous team going down if the, i think they I could see them going back to the afc championship game again that all just comes down to consistency level their defense is very strong just depends on how josh allen plays number six is the rams i talked about them a lot at length already consistency 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 i like stafford i really want him to do well i want to see this team go far because i i think stafford deserves it and he's finally on a stud team we'll see what happens there number five is the cowboys how about them Cowboys? They, again, I'm not a Cowboys fan. I don't like the Cowboys. A lot of that comes down to their fans and how every year they go, we're going to the Super Bowl. And you know what? This year, I'm not saying you're going to the Super Bowl. I'm just saying you're looking a lot better. Dax played exceptionally well. Ezekiel Elliott has stopped fumbling. The receivers are studs. C.D. Lamb has been great this year. Amari Cooper has been good. You have... Said Wilson, who has come out and done some great things to Michael Gallup. It is just a very offense-heavy team with an emergence of a defensive player like like Diggs. Trevon Diggs has been tremendous. He does get burnt quite a lot, but he is very good at getting interceptions and making those big-time plays when you need him. And I think that's, again, a sign of a good team. This team has come down to find out how to win when they need it. And that's something the Cowboys haven't really been able to do in years prior. And they're a fun team to watch. And I think that they're also another good team to watch. Another team that we got should be keeping our eye on is that number four is the Cardinals. A lot of people probably gonna be like, "Why don't you have them higher? They're eight and two. Yeah, yeah. I the reason I don't have them higher is I I still don't believe in this team really. And I think that's kind of crazy to say that a team that's eight and two and have beaten some good teams I don't really believe in. And mainly because I've seen what this team has done in years prior and how they've just kind of collapsed. They did not look good with Colt McCoy as their quarterback. And that's obviously it's Colt McCoy. But they're getting back Kyler. They're getting back DeAndre Hopkins. I think that they're a really fun team to watch. I think that they have a really fun offense. Their defense is pretty solid. They've gone a lot better. It sucks about J.J. Watt not being there. But they still have Chandler Jones. They still have Buda Baker. They still have a really good defense there. I'm just not. I'm just not. I'm, I don't see it. I don't see it happening this year, and Cardinals fans don't crucify me. I just, I, I don't see it. I, I don't know. I think this team has to have a lot more defining wins. I think that their schedule coming up doesn't really give them the chance to have those defining wins. They do have the Seahawks, which have been 
a dreadful team this year, the Rams, the Colts, the Cowboys. So there is a couple opportunities there for them to make a name for themselves, to put that staple win. Um, We'll see. We'll see what happens with this team. Number three is the Buccaneers. And yeah, they could probably be a bit lower on this team, but with all that talent on offense, all that talent on defense, I can't write this team off whatsoever. They have to be this high. Like You're going to sit here and tell me that a team with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown is not should not be in the top three with Tom Brady, the greatest of all time, throwing to them at a career pacing level that he's had. He's playing ridiculously out of his mind right now. The defense is getting healthier. They're coming back. Richard Sherman can't stay healthy, but he wasn't really part of the plan anyways. They have, they've gotten a lot of their pieces back. I don't know when Murphy Bunting's supposed to be coming back, but once they get him back, they should be good. They did just lose Vita Vea, which is a huge loss on their interior on their interior D line, uh, he's he's an unsung hero of that defense, and I think that is a massive, massive loss for them there. But I I just don't I, I'm not counting this team out. Was, every time someone counts Tom Brady out, he comes back and he just spits in your face. So <laughs> I'm not gonna look at this Washington loss that badly. I think they're still a very good football team. I think they're still the most stacked team in the league, aside from the Rams. And I just, if maybe if they start losing a little bit more, then we'll be a little bit more concerned. But I just, they're better than they were last year. I still don't think they should have won last year, but they did somehow. And so all the power to them. Don't count out Tom Brady there at number three. Number two is the Packers. Aaron Rodgers is carrying, carrying this team, this offense. But this defense something that has been criticized for a while now has actually been very good. And they don't even have a lot of their pieces yet. You have to kind of look at this team too and what they're able to do with injuries. Uh, they don't have Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari is coming back. They don't have Jair Alexander. That I don't think a lot of people are kind of mentioning that is that Alexander has really not been healthy for a lot of this season. He's been out for a lot of games and they're still finding ways to win games. That's incredible. They almost won against the Chiefs last week. And if Aaron Rodgers played, they win that game easily, easily, without a question in my mind. And I think Rodgers is, again, he's playing at his MVP level again. And yeah, he's not vaccinated, but this team is going to go far this year. I think that the NFC is going to be, the playoff time is going to be fascinating to watch. And then number one is the Titans. What can I say about the Titans than the fact that they're overachieving without their best player? And yeah, Julio hasn't really turned out to be the signing, the the trade that everyone was hoping for because he's hurt and that's what Julio is and that's what Julio has been for the last couple of years is he's just always hurt. And I think that if they can kind of still win without Julio and Derrick Henry, obviously A.J. Brown is a stud, Tannehill plays very good and if you're still able to win at the rate you're going, Vrabel deserves a, a nod in the coach of the year candidate. This team could be very scary come January time if they get everyone back healthy. Their defense has looked very good, and they're making winning plays. And I think that because of that, they're the best team in the league right now. And I don't I don't think that there's going to be a team that's going to be able to stop them <laughs> throughout the rest of the season. You look at their schedule coming up, too. The Patriots are going to be a pretty pretty fun challenge for them because the Patriots love to shut down the run. I think that's probably their hardest game for the rest of the season. They have the Steelers, which again, I, I don't really think the Steelers are, are much of a team this year. I know there's going to be a lot of Steelers fans that are like, what are you talking about? Ben Roethlisberger isn't washed, but you're just delusional. If you think Ben Roethlisberger isn't washed right now. Yeah. They're still winning with him. Whatever. Uh, the, the Patriots are probably going to be their most t- challenging game. Probably also the, the Niners, but we've seen how inconsistent that team has been. And I think, I just think that this is the team that's going to get that by come the AFC and it, they're going to be uh it's going to be a fun playoff race to watch. So we're going to, we're going to keep that, keep that in mind here. Now looking forward at this week schedule, we got some interesting, games on the schedule obviously tonight the Patriots do visit the Atlanta Falcons I I suspect a blowout there tonight though I would not um I would not be shocked if it's a trap game because everyone's like oh yeah it's gonna be a blowout Packers and the Vikings at 1 p.m that should be a good game Bills and Colts another good game there we've got just looking at the schedule Cowboys and Chiefs that's probably going to be a fascinating game to watch I think that should be an explosive game if the Chiefs show up. Cardinals and Seahawks, I usually would be very excited for this game. I but I just I don't I can't with the Seahawks team right now. They've been extremely disappointing. I, I don't blame Russ for a lot of that. He hasn't looked great. He was hurt. He did he looked very rusty against the Packers, but I there this is a team that's probably that's out of the race now and there's some kind of change that's gonna have to happen there. So I th- I suspect a Cardinals win here. Steelers Chargers, I I don't really care too much about that game. It could be a good game. Chargers have kind of been floundering around a little bit, and I hope Hub- Herbert Hubbard 
Herbert picks it up a little bit more, and that team starts to go because they're a fun team to watch. I love Austin Eckler. I really love Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. It's a very fun team to watch. I want the Chargers to come out top here, but we'll see what happens there. If Ben Roethlisberger is unable to play, this game gets immediately uninteresting. If Mason Rudolph is still (laughs) quarterback, I don't want to watch Mason Rudolph play again. And the Monday nighter is the Giants and Buccaneers, so we have our yearly close to win for the Giants just to come out short once again. It's a good week for football here. We're getting blessed every single week here in the NFL. There hasn't really been a lot of boring weeks, a lot of boring games, and it's been fun to watch, and we will keep continuing to track this on TST as the weeks go on. Transitioning over now to the NBA season, and it's in full effect now. Things are starting to move. The Warriors are in first place in the Western Conference and in the league in general at 12-2, and and that's kind of shocking. They have beaten the teams. They're supposed to be beaten, but a lot of this comes down to Steph Curry playing at MVP level. I think that he was snubbed last year. I think that he was really good last year, and I think that he kind of deserved the MVP, and I think that he has that in his mind, and he's going off right now. He's playing at a tremendous pace, at a tremendous level, and I think this Warriors team is dangerous once Clay Thompson comes back. And we're a couple weeks away from him coming back. He's supposed to be coming back around Christmas time. We're almost there. When Clay comes back and he's able to fit back into that offense, I think it's going to obviously take a couple weeks for him to get used to it because he's been out for almost two years. I think this team is dangerous to watch and dangerous in general. And you look at the West of the Western Conference, not a lot. It's kind of a lot of inconsistency again. And yeah, it's the start of the season. Everyone's going to be a little inconsistent to start the season. But the Lakers are 8-8. Eight and eight. LeBron's been hurt, but I don't, again, the Los Angeles retirement home, I don't really see this team doing much with all of the old people they have there. Yeah, you could say Carmelo Anthony is playing good, but also if you're relying on Carmelo Anthony to win games now at the age that he is, you're in a little bit of difficulties. The Clippers surprisingly have actually been able to keep pace. They're 9-5. and five. Paul George is playing tremendously well. He's carrying that team so hard right now, and Kawhi, if he comes back later in the season, I think the Clippers, again, they just can't count this team out because playoff Kawhi is a different beast. You got the Nuggets playing well, the Mavericks playing well, the Jazz, the Suns, all the teams you kind of expect to play playing well in the NFC, NFC, in the Western Conference. And then when you get over to the Eastern Conference, it's kind of just a whole schmoz of weird going on. And this is, the Wizards are the first place team at 10-4. and four. And I don't think there's a single person that could have predicted this, especially when they traded away Russell Wilson and everyone went, all right, Russell Wilson, I can't speak right now. They tried to be Russell Westbrook, and everyone went, all right, this team's not really competing anymore. They're kind of just going to be building for pay. Nope, they're 10-4, and four, and they, they're they doing good. And I think that they're a fun team to watch, too. I had the chance of seeing them play against the Raptors for their opening night. I was at that game, which was a very fun time, even though the Raptors did not win that game. They looked good. They, they have a good bench piece. Kuzma I don't like at all, and it's hilarious watching him play because he still makes some clown, boneheaded decisions. But I, I they're fun. They're a fun team to watch. The Nets are right behind them at 11-5. Again, yeah, the Nets, you expect them to be there. The Bulls are a team that are really overachieving well, which they should be because they have the talent for it. They don't have Nikola Vucevic at the moment, but they're still winning games. The Heat are doing well. Kyle Lowry has been a good addition to that team. I miss you. And the Hornets are 9-7. and seven. The Cavs are 9-7. and seven. Somehow, the Knicks, everyone thought they were going to the East conference after one game everyone was going crazy after the double overtime win against the celtics they are eight and seven uh, yeah uh the 76ers eight and seven celtics seven and eight that's a team that's kind of been floundering the bucks at seven and eight is another shocking one this is the reigning champions and they're not uh they're not doing so hot to start the season i i think we're gonna see that progress a little bit more as it goes on the raptors are at seven and eight and this is a team that started off six and three and now have made their way to 7-8. and eight. And they have finally gotten Pascal Siakam back. He has looked good so far in reps. However, they have not won a game with Siakam yet. And I think that this team has yet to find their offensive identity. Everyone knows Nick Nurse as this defensive genius. And this team over commits on everything defensively. And because of that, they are a pain in the ass to play. But leaves so many people open for threes that we keep losing games because there's so many open threes and every single player is looking like Steph Curry out there because they're just hucking threes and making them in because they're wide open. They played the Portland Trailblazers their last game and they left CJ McCollum open every single shot. That's CJ McCollum. You can't keep him open. Yes, CJ's not the most explosive player in the league, but CJ is a competent shooter and a very good point guard. Why are you leaving him open? 
Otherwise, I think that this team is going to flounder around 500 for a lot of the season. I think they're a fringe playoff team. I don't think they're doing anything this year. I think it's a good building year for Scotty Barnes, who has been by far and away... I, I, I wouldn't say by far and away, actually. I think Mobley has been... Uh, just as good, especially a beast defensively. But Scotty Barnes has progressed in a way that not a lot of people were expecting him to progress. He's averaging 16 points in the regular season so far on 51% field goal shooting. He is 18% from three. That's terrible, but Scotty was not known to be a shooter, and I think that'll come in his time. He's averaging about eight points, eight rebounds a game, three assists a game, one steal, 0.6 blocks a game. He's looked great. And everyone counted out Masai. Everyone went, why aren't you taking Jalen Suggs? And I think this is showing why is because Scotty Barnes is a freak athlete. He has looked great having to lock down these top tier NBA players. And he's been doing it. And he's looked really good. He's I wish they give let him shoot the ball a bit more because he's only his usage has kind of gone down a little bit more. And I really want him to be shooting more because I think he is a stud. And I can't wait to see him play a bit more. I think this Raptors team in the future is going to be good. Now, right now, though, I think they're going to, they're kind of in a little bit of a holding period. I don't know what the future holds for this team as in regard to Fred Van Vliet and uh, OG Ananobi, I know is going to stay there. Fred, I think, is going to stay on this team. I don't know about Siakam. I can see them moving Siakam for the right move. I am not a fan of that move, but also I understand it because we have a lot of shooting guards and Scotty's a shooting guard. I guess he could play point guard too, but I, there'll be an interesting team to watch as it goes on. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the sports talk. Just wanted to kind of talk about the NFL season and a little bit of NBA because NFL has kind of been the one I've been paying attention to the most recently. You notice the lack of NHL talk uh, is because I've kind of fallen off completely on the NHL right now, especially with all the stuff going on with Kyle Beach and the Chicago Blackhawks and my disappointment, uh, my extreme disappointment um, to that the le- both the league and the Blackhawks on how this has all been handled. And it's I commend I commend Kyle Beach tremendously especially for his interview that he did that interview almost moved me to tears uh he is a a a hero in my eyes and I I I don't understand the process I don't understand how you put aside some players safety and some players concerns to win a championship and knowing that I supported that team for 11 years over 11 years now um, has made me reevaluate a lot of things about the NHL, especially how they handled that situation because the NHL is not, they're not innocent in this either. And I don't think a lot of people are talking enough about how the NHL has also hid this. They knew since over last year and nothing was done with it. There was no investigation. So th- there's a whole thing there that I just don't really want to touch right now. So I'm probably not going to be covering the NHL a lot this year, unless there's some big moves, some big trades, some big news Probably I'm not going to be talking about that. Maybe as it goes on, maybe after the football kind of dies down a little bit and it's just basketball talk, maybe I will move a little bit into NHL. But for now, I'm not having any of it. But that about wraps up for this episode of this of this episode. I can't speak now. This is a good time to wrap up. This about wraps it up for TST with Jake for this week. Let me know in the comment section below or wherever you're watching this what you enjoyed, what you would like me to do in future episodes. If you have any suggestions on any types of uh any types of things I can do on this thing because I'm always open to suggestions and that about wraps up if you guys did enjoy it if you could hit that like button and subscribe for more but other than that I have been Jake and I will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching